Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? From slide note, this is Webs here. In this video, let me further continue the discussion of our bank account class or program that we are trying to make. If you guys haven't seen the earlier videos, I have included a link to those videos in the description text below. So please go there and check them out. So in the previous video, we talked about making the withdrawal method. Before that, the deposit and in other words, we are trying to build a complete class account. So let's actually complete this full account class here and then we can see exactly what can be done about this so if you go down there's only one method get balance inside the account class which of now is doing nothing so let's write some code for it here our main objective is to return the value of balance I'm gonna say return balance over here and that takes care of returning the balance now I need to change the return type of course of the method to keep it double and that's all we need to do so now let's move to the other class which is our customer class and try to see what can be done over there so let's talk about this simple get name method that we have this method is supposed to return this name instance variable over here so I will simply say return name over here and the return type of the data name is string so our methods return type should be string over here same way get account is gonna return the account object I'm gonna say return account over here and the same way you can go up at the top over here and put the return type as account and that takes care of pretty much most of the things inside our customer class now there is one more thing that we need to do and that is to put something inside this display method but before, before we do that let's talk about a cons constructor for the customer class now at this point if you go here to our main method at the top remove all this stuff and if you say simply customer customer equals to new customer something like this as you guys notice there is no need for you to supply any data to the constructor and that default constructor is going to make the name as null and the account object also as null because all the non-primitive types are assigned a default value of null in java right but we don't want that we want a person to have a name because what is the idea if you make a customer with a name of null it's not good right so we gotta go ahead and say customer and that takes two arguments that would be one of them would be the string name of the customer and the other one will be the account object A. Now, if you are looking for this and if you are seeing that this looks pretty weird, don't worry about it because it's just like writing int x over here. Same way I've written account A over here. That's all I've done. So here I'm going to say name equals to n and then our account equals to A. So that is the simple assignment that I'm trying to do. Put the value of n into this name and put the value of A into this account. Now, when, remember when I say put the value, I'm talking about the reference. Now, at this point the reference the address that is inside a is copied inside this account variable which means account and a are gonna point to the same object right that's how things work as far as object references are concerned which is something again I've talked about in my playlist so at this point let's write the display method here we simply want to print something out and let's see what that can be what that can be so I'm saying system out print ln over here and then I'm gonna simply say name of the customer is name and so on right now if you remember if I print this account object directly over here it's gonna print the address because by default instance variables only contain the address if they are of a non-primitive type right so what we want to do is we want the account number from this account object so in other words we need to call a method here I'm gonna say account dot balance now right now we only have a method get balance so let's go up and see if we can make a method to print the account number if you guys remember the account class there was a double balance and there's a string account number so let's make a method that gets this value because this is private in nature and we don't want to change that so here I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna say public string get account number so here I can go down inside my customer class and now I can say account dot get account number over there same way I can also print the balance by saying print balance over here here I will call the account dot get balance method that will return the value of the balance from here and that will be printed right here inside the screen now remember this is just like an expression like saying 2 plus 3 and it will calculate 2 plus 3 equals to 5 and print it the same way when you write something like this inside a print ln statement it will run this method get the value from that method and print that value over here on the screen so that's how it works so at this point our account class or customer class are both completely finished now let's move to the bigger one which is the bank class before we can start working with our full app and at this point at the main method here you notice an error that says the class constructor of the customer should have a parameter inside it since we have not passed any here so let me remove this so at this point inside the bank class if you guys notice there is 
an entire array of customers here which means the bank has several customers that's the meaning of this statement over here so there is one small sweet little problem over here now the number of customers that a bank has is not fixed right because every time the bank may remove some customers it may add some new customers it can be 10 it can be 1000 it can be a million so the actual problem of having several customers inside a bank cannot be solved with an array because for an array you need to specify exactly how many elements are going to be there right at the time when you make the array right that means we'll have to use some collection class over here for tackling the number variable number of customers that we have but for now let's just stick to the basic array and try to find out how we can do that so i'm going to give an upper limit i'm going to say new customer and thousand so at this point i have not created any object what i have done is i have said that there is an array of type customer it is supposed to have thousand elements that means thousand customers now the reason I put 1000 is we want to put a very large number here because we said that the number of customers is not fixed it might change so the ideal case would be to use an array list over here or a vector class over here if you guys have heard about them but for now let's just stick to the basic array so the calculate interest method is the next one that we are going to work out the calculate interest method is going to find the interest for a particular customer right you need to specify which customer you want to find the interest for and then it will find the interest for that customer's particular account now since we have not talked about dates and times over here this method calculate interest is only about displaying how much interest the customer can get over a period of one year for his deposit whatever it is so th these are the following steps first ask which customer so we're gonna take a customer object over here inside the calculate interest method now again if you look at this statement and if you're finding this very weird don't worry it's just like writing int x over here in other words we have simply written customer customer over here so now what we need to do is ask which customer which is done over here then get the customers account so I'm gonna go down inside this method I'm gonna say account a equals to customer dot get account you guys remember the customer class had a method right down over here inside the class customer the get account method returned the account object for that particular customer right? that's exactly what I'm calling here at the top so now I can use this account and get the accounts balance again it's a very simple procedure I'm gonna say double balance or bal over here it thinks in a dot get balance again the account class itself if you go and see over here inside the class account had a method called get balance that returned the amount of money inside that account and that's exactly what I have called over here so you guys can see the bigger picture of how different objects work together and what happens when you put everything at one place right so now the double balance is eight of get balance and now I'm gonna calculate the interest amount which is the amount that will be added to the total right I'm gonna say double amount or in other words I should say interest amount which will give you a better idea now this interest amount should be the balance into the interest rate that the bank offer offers I'm gonna say interest rate here and remember the interest rate is 8.5 we need to divide that by 100 because interest rate is in percentage so I'm going to divide that by 100 and that takes care of the interest amount now at this point the total balance that the customer will get after adding the interest amount would be the balance say 100 bucks and the interest of say 10 bucks added together giving 110 bucks right so let's print that out here by system.out.println and I'm also saying total balance over here by saying total balance equals to balance we need to get the balance of the customer right I'm gonna again say bal plus interest amount right this will give me the total sum that is thousand dollars which he already has and the interest amount of say hundred dollars on that thousand dollars adding one thousand one hundred dollars right and that's exactly what I'm gonna print over here so at this point the calculate interest method is almost done it simply just prints the value out saying that hey you can have this much uh, interest amount and this would be a total balance after adding the interest now if you go to the get interest rate method here we're supposed to return the interest rate again just like other methods we had once say return interest rate over here and that takes care of that change the return type to double and we are pretty much done with this so at this point everything is almost complete the class bank is fully made the class account is made the deposit methods the withdraw methods other get methods inside class customer and everything else is constructed now the only one thing that remains to be done is to actually go and execute our public static void main where we are going to actually have the customers 
ask the user for everything and get this working so in the next video let's get to that part and let me show you how to make this into a menu driven program which is one of the terms that people use in java or C, C++ all the time in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment box below thanks for watching catch you guys in the next video have a